Welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show. One of the stars of Apple TV's Severance, none other than Adam Scott. Great to see you, sir. Hey, Rich. Congrats on the show. Thanks. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. So when you first heard about this idea and show, how did it hit you? Uh, Ben Stiller, who was the executive producer and directed six of the nine episodes, he called me like in January of 2017 and has told me the idea yes. of the show and that he was thinking of me for it. And it sounded great, uh, but I didn't actually read a script for a couple more years because they were working on it and developing it. So, But for those couple of years, I couldn't shake it. I couldn't stop thinking about this idea. Um, and then reading it, I was like, you know, excited because this is exactly the kind of show I like to watch as just you a like viewer. The, you like the dystopian Well, just like stuff? science fiction and something yes. that has a big idea to, like when I, growing up, I was really into Twilight Zone. Sure. Um, and it was kind of this mind-bendy thing with these great characters. I mean, it's character-driven, but it's this really cool idea. Anyway, my first instinct was just like, oh, well, I'll never actually get to be in this. This is way too good. Um, and I've been in this business long enough to know, like, if something feels too good to be true, I'm sure it is. Uh, but, you know, I luckily ended up, you know, getting to be in it. And, and I'm just so happy that, 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 I, that I am a part of it because uh, it is something I would watch if I was, you know, not a part of it. Adam Scott here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, Severance. Again, season one has been uh, available for streaming and it has been renewed for season two and it is in uh, line for all the Emmy talk and, and rightfully so. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned science fiction. There's also kind of like a an old school 70s, 60s, yeah. 70s type feel to it. There, there are some times where I feel uh, watching it there's there's kind of a and and this is a as a big a nod I can give to Ben Stiller who directed six of the nine episodes. It's like a Kubrick type feel uh -huh. to it. Yeah, it's shot that way. Sure. There there is a Clockwork Orange type mm -hmm. sort of feel to it. Parallax view. Parallax kind of view. Adam, you you just mentioned a very rare mention on this great movie. Parallax view. Chris is another one of those movies you have to see. You definitely haven't seen it. Warren Beatty, 70, okay, Warren I don't forget what year it was, but like it is 72 way ahead, way ahead of the conspiracy mania that's yeah. captured our, our world these days. Yeah. But there's a clockwork orange type feel to it where a science has messed with your emotions, yeah. you know, uh, and trying to create a different brain yes. for the way to control your thoughts and your emotions. I, I, I thought like there was a very clockwork orange type feel to this show. You yeah, know? I think. You know, it's also kind of, you know, looking at technology a bit and the sorts of things that at first sound kind of great and sound like they would simplify and help us mm -hmm. as people. Um, but then as you really kind of dig in, you start to wonder if the the side that's truly has the advantage and will truly benefit from something like this. Is it really us or is it one of these larger companies that's sort of holding the strings interesting man and and it is um right that it's on apple tv because it does look like it's shot with a background of an apple box like you're in an <laughs> apple store like a genius bar kind of you know lumen industries is it's the very genius clean bar. it's yeah. very clean yeah. like i said like a, like a it really does have like a space odyssey feel to it mm -hmm. where and, and the hallways yeah uh, uh where's the shot like what's the set yeah, this. we shot it in the Bronx, the in a in a uh, on a brand new stage that they built up there. Because uh, there's no building in the Bronx like that, right? No. Like, no okay. It's no. To say. No, they built all of those hallways just uh, for just us, and they were here. literally there were so many of them that in order to get to the office set, the room with the green carpet and all of that, you yes. had to walk through these fake hallways that they built, yes. but they were constantly moving them around depending on what we were shooting. So no joke, like 75% of the time, I would get lost just trying to get to the set and would have to just yell out that I'm here and I don't know where I am, but you need to come find me because I'm going to be late if you don't. And so someone would have to come find me and, and escort me to the to the set because it's all the, all the hallways are white. 
Um, but you would come to a dead end and it started feeling like, you know, a, a dystopian nightmare. Yeah, it was, so they were kind of <laughs> messing with you to get yeah. into the uh, your mindset wow. of your role. Yeah. Did you at any point stroll and find Christopher Walken uh, lost in the hallways <laughs> as well, Adam? Did that you know, happen for you? I, I, I never did could, because Christopher Walken is far uh, smarter and has a better sense of direction than me. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think he would ever get lost anywhere. <laughs> What was that like? Is that the first time you ever worked with yeah. Christopher Walken? Yeah, and, okay. uh, and I, you know, Christopher Walken is one of the great actors we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, he's someone that I've been, he and John Turturro and Patricia Arquette, all three of them are people I have been kind of fa uh, fantasizing what it would be like to work with them yes. my entire career. Uh, these are, you know, three of the very best that we have. Um, and so getting to actually, you know, work with them and go, go, go to work with them every day was unbelievable. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm wondering, too, like, Chris, we could not have um, what, what, like a Lumen Industries type setup because we have to remember the sports that we're watching at That's home right. yeah, exactly. to, come right. to come like in here. Like, we could not have a, yeah, there could be not, there can't be a show like this with severance. No, you know, but you could sever yourself for like traffic on the way to work if you don't want to do remember that. that. Well, that I'd like to sever myself from all Boston sports. That would be good, <laughs> uh, right? Shame. Like, you know what I mean? Like all Boston shame. sports. I'd like to sever myself like from the Larry sever, Bird years. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'd like to do that. Dude, would you really though? Then you would miss mm. all the magic stuff. That was so fun. No, right? I understand. No, I, I, but just the Larry Bird sections of that. Isn't there the science to do that? I sure. Mean, I mean, as long as, as long as we're going in this direction. Absolutely. I mean, if I could just sever the Jordan years of the Knicks out, um, I would sever that, you know? Whoa. Yeah, I would do that. I'm out, I'm out you know, I'm pinpointing the things I'd like Derek to sever. All could just be severed from me. That's totally fine. So oh, if you severed time. out the Jordan years, yes. then watching The Last Dance, would it would really blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be fascinated by the Rodman parts. In oh particular. yeah, I'm sure. You know, like, like who's this guy? Who is this? Is he from planet Earth? Yeah. Like, what is up with that? You know, I don't know if I could do that. It would be tough. We've had John Totoro's brother Nick in here. Oh yeah, and sure. he's a, it, I can't believe they're from the same family. Quite yeah, frankly. I worked with Nick too. I worked with him on NYPD Blue, uh, like back in the '90s when I did a guest spot. He was great. He was so cool. Yeah, and he's he's a diehard Yankee fan. Like he's totally insane. Sure. Um, so you know what you you have um, actually you, so that means you've worked with two people um in one of the greatest saturday night live skits of all time which is the cowbell skit right with yeah. will ferrell and and christopher walken do you have, yep. did you pick his brain about his career did you any downtime on the set where you're talking to walking about anything that he's done I I, mean, or that just doesn't happen i wouldn't do that i i i'm 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 in far, in far too much awe uh, of really? him to like walk up and talk shop. Yeah, I'm I I he's you know he's Christopher Walken. Uh, I I don't feel like I'm I'm in a place where where Dude, I'm. You're in I'm Severance, worried. dude. You're in the show with him. Yeah, like, I like, know, this but is... he's I I still am just I no I I never did oh no, no matter how much I wanted to. I would th I would walk up to him right away, and I know this is maybe not professional. And bring up the watch soliloquy from Pulp yeah, Fiction. I know. Like, that's the one I would. Well, make. I had this monologue that I had to deliver in front of him, and uh, I couldn't shake thinking about the watch monologue from Pulp Fiction. Because <laughs> it's Could, are you serious? maybe the best monologue ever kind yeah. of got uh, on film. Right. It's just so beautifully delivered and just riveting. And he's just talking about a watch stuck up someone's butt yes um so i had this monologue i had to deliver in front of me and it was a scene where there's so many people in it it was going to take us all 14 hours that day to shoot this one scene which meant i had to deliver this monologue to him for 14 hours and i felt like i didn't have it i didn't understand why it wasn't working but i knew it sounded like garbage mm -hmm. um so I asked if I could get my shot last because they go person by person, right? Okay. So at the very end of those 14 hours, I'm finally delivering the one that you'll actually see in the show of me saying it because I needed that whole day of rehearsing it for myself. So I'm doing it all day. I'm like, this sucks, this sucks. Christopher Walken's watching me and Totoro's there too. No. <laughs> um, but then finally, by the time we get to it, get to my shot, I finally feel like I something clicked. I figured it out. And I finally delivered it and thought, okay, maybe that made sense. Maybe that wasn't terrible, but I'll, I'm sure Walken still thinks I suck. <laughs> but then at the end of the day, I was like talking to someone, he was walking by behind me. And as he walked by, he just grabbed my 
elbow and just gave it a squeeze and a little bit of a shake before he walked off. And that meant the world to me. <laughs> That's that, amazing. That he, whether that meant not bad or not <laughs> it meant that's how i took it and it meant the world it also could have meant i gotta get this watch out of my ass i've been sitting yeah, here for I've 14 been, straight been, hours yeah. it could have been that but that is amazing right. adam that yeah. is a that is i i, I love I mean, stories you know, like that that's so great for walking so yeah adam scott here uh, on the rich eisen show okay uh we have a segment here called celebrity true or false where we have uh oh, called some stories from your history your or things that have oh, been boy. written about okay. you we'll see okay. what is true or what is not uh, and we've got some great production value to kick it all off. Go ahead and hit it, please. Celebrity, true or false? You That's can't incredible. handle the truth. Oh, there you go. God. There you go. That's it. How do you guys do that? Magic, magic of editing. Television. Yeah, magic. Yes. You say yeah. television, I say editing. Yeah, you know, we just do have a crack staff. It's, you know. Chris Chris must have something to do with that because that, that uh, was No, he had nothing to do with that. Yeah, okay. No. Not so much. No, I don't think so. By the way, Chris went a little crazy this past week. Yeah, we, have, right, okay. we actually are going to hit that. I right, believe, right. I believe okay. we have something uh, specifically in store for that at the very end. Wow. Sort of an O. Henry-like twist okay. at the very end of Great. Celebrity True or False with Adam Scott. First one up. Uh, true or False, you were a deadhead as a teenager. I was. I went through a Grateful Dead uh, phase uh, as a as a teenager, like a pretty intense one. Like I went to see many, many how many dead shows. What do you think? What's the what's the grand total number? Uh, probably seven or eight, but all in a matter of like you know eighteen months, and then I was kind of out of that phase. But I still love uh, Grateful Dead. Did you have tickets, or were you one of those asking for a miracle? No, like I would up have your finger as people were coming. <laughs> there are a lot in. of those. I know that. Because Have you guess been to what? Dead shows? Guess what? Uh, one of the first serious girlfriends of my life was a Dead fan. Uh -huh. and I've been to about 15 Dead shows. 15? Wow. I think one five. since that stage, I've probably hit about 15 because I've gone a couple, a few times yeah. over the years. Did you, you? It's pretty fun, right? Yeah. The drums in space stuff where they were playing yeah. drums for like a half an hour was yeah. uh, not my bag. Sure. I was like, when is this going to end? Like, where's the chorus? Where's the hook? <laughs> they were just playing for just drums for like yeah. uh, but but. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ship of Fools is my uh, Ooh, number one. That's a one. good song. That's my number one yeah. dead song. I love just, you know, I got into them because Touch of Grey was like a top hit, sure. 10 hit. Yeah, that's yeah. when they really exploded again. Yes, commercially, yes. I still love that that song, too. So you didn't need, and by the way, there are people who go to the dead because um, there's a famous uh, line, I need a miracle every day. Uh, they hold up a finger yep. or two fingers. I need a miracle. They're hoping that somebody gives them Get tickets. A ticket. Oh. So you did not do that. They, no, because you, you I was still a teenager. So I would like get a ride with my parents and get dropped off out front. So we made sure I had my ticket and my, you know, money for a hot dog <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> Were you the only person dropped off on a dead concert? I remember like my that? dad drove me and a couple oh, yeah. of my buddies. <laughs> Where are you going? To to Laguna Seca and dropped us off out front and driving up, you know, in traffic, people were like, acid, you want some acid? You want to join? And I'm like, uh, dad, just right here is fine. That's right. Just, yeah. Drop, I'll walk from here. He's like, what is this? <laughs> oh man. All right. Next up, uh, true or false, Adam Scott, you were initially intimidated on the set of Step Brothers because you'd never done improv before. Is that true or false? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, mean, I was a, a novice to comedy, really. Um, I mean, you know, I grew up, you know, a voracious fan of Monty Python, SNL, and all that stuff. Sure. But as far as like in practice, I had been doing mostly like dramatic stuff. And so I got Step Brothers as a fluke because someone had the role and fell out at the last minute and they Who was had that? to cast Do it. Who we know? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm at liberty to say. I don't know if they've oh. ever said it. Publicly, well, I think you know. I mean, we'll... it was a scheduling thing. It wasn't anything, okay. you know, like uh, weird. Uh, so, so I was freaked out and had to kind of figure it out as we went. I, I, I equate it to learning how to throw the javelin at the Olympics. Because <laughs> you got feral the and, stadium and of people and all the cameras. Yeah, because you're doing it with John and Will and Mary Steenburgen and Richard Jenkins and Catherine Hahn. Oh, that's right. Jeez. And I was just like. Uh, okay, and as far as improv goes, I was I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and and but I feel like at the end of those four months, I had started to you know figure it out. So uh, how much of that was improv? A, a lot, a lot of the movie is is improvised. So a huge amount. You would do like a scripted take, yeah. and then just screw around, and and it was like oh my goodness, the, and, and it changed the way I kind of thought about 
work from there on out. It's just about throwing it all against the wall and seeing what sticks. And who cares if something doesn't work? We won't use it. We'll just do throw it all, just do everything and screw around and then take the bits that work and couple it together into a, an awesome movie. And I just had never really, and I think, you know, that period of time when Judd and Adam McKay and those guys kind of came along and started making the, the movies in this kind of really loose, different way, yeah. it really changed filmed comedy uh, uh, in, in, for, in, for the better, I think. Do you remember your favorite ad-libbed line from it, Adam Scott? Where you're um, like, you ad-libbed it, can you, can you say it? on the show i mean or? the abs uh the, the abs i i haven't eaten a carb since 2004 or something that was <laughs> ad lib um there were i mean there are a, a lot i mean those guys will and john are like genius right genius well i mean so katherine hans moment where she's coming on to john c riley that that was all ad-libbed where she was just saying one awful nasty sexually I mean, charged in the thing script, after another she in the script she does that but yeah. i'm sure all the w incredible things she was saying i'm sure a lot of them were katherine because she is one of the great improvisers <laughs> Yeah. Next one in, in that film, Step Brothers, true or false, Adam Scott, the family singing scene, you were actually lip syncing to an actor who was singing right outside the car window. Is that true? That's right. I can't sing, but everyone else in the in the car is singing live. Um, and <laughs> okay. I was the only one lip syncing. And the guy singing was right in front of me, and I was locking eyes with him so we would stay in sync. And he was standing there with a microphone just... <laughs> And we were, uh, that's what, who I'm looking at the whole time. But everyone else was on pitch and incredible. And uh, I just couldn't, I, I, I wish I could sing it. And was it you who swerved the car or was that a stunt actor who swerved the car? That to was a end stunt that actor, okay, unfortunately. Very good. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, we were in <laughs> green screen safety. the whole time. Yeah, safety first. That is so funny, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, next one, uh, true or false, Adam Scott. Um, the uh, Mayfair Games developed a uh, play playable version of Ben Wyatt's game, Cones of Dunshire, but it was never marketed because it was too complex from Parks and Rec. Is that a true story? I would imagine. I mean, I think that the rules of that game were so insane <laughs> and purposely so. But somebody tried to... Somebody tried to kind of... You know how when Trump would just say something and then his administration would be like, Oh, yeah, 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 and try and shape policy around the <laughs> stupid thing he said. It was kind of like that. Like, they set all these confusing rules for comedy's sake, and they tried to develop a game that around those insane rules. Um, and I thought it was, like, going to come out, but it, it just never never did for whatever reason. So, I mean, Probably because it was too complicated. But uh, I just find that so funny that they you tried to actually make it work, yeah. and then they just they said, just screw it. Up. They just gave up. How much fun was it to do Parks and Rec for you? Oh, it was the best. It was the best. I really miss it, and I miss all those people. It was so fun. Uh, Adam Scott, last one for you here. Every April, uh, you get lots of good luck at the Masters tweets because people think you're the actual <laughs> golfer, Adam Scott. That's right. That's right. You do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and m my very first like celebrity perk ever was before I was a uh, kind of known person at all, and... I checked into a hotel and they thought I was the golfer and I, they brought me into this room and offered me all these cool, you know, put me on the list for all the clubs in town and <laughs> offered me all this, put me in this incredible suite and all this stuff. Cause they thought I was, cause you golfer. thought you were the, the master's champion, the master's yes. champion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, have you ever tried to get a round of golf, uh, out of something like that? Yeah. Or? And I'm, uh, terrible at it. Okay. Terrible. Terrible. So, so doesn't really work for you. I on would, that front. I would not be able to <laughs> pose as Adam Scott the well, let's golfer. See if, let's see if Adam Scott the golfer could pose as you. I doubt exactly. that as well. Maybe so. Uh, oh, do we have? Do we need one more. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll get one more. All right, there's the uh, the uh, yet more production value. We got one more. Do you have this one? Well, you, you can do it, Rich. Um, it put it up on the screen near Hoskins because I don't have it written down. True or false? You got schooled in cornhole at the big slick by one of the guys on the screen there, one of the <laughs> Potash I, brothers. Is that why, true? Is why, that true or false? Why? Uh, would this information make it to air? I don't understand. <laughs> How does anyone know about this? Chris, do you know? Uh, well, do you have the answer to that question? I don't know which of the twins because I can't tell them apart. They Me wear either. the same glasses. Me and one of them were partners against Adam and David Cook. Uh huh. 
at the Big Slick this yeah. very yeah. weekend. Slick. What time of uh, what time of the evening uh, was, was this? Uh, it was like two thirty in the morning. It was very, <laughs> cool. it was You're very playing two, early. cornhole at two thirty in, in the morning indoors. Cornhole, in a hotel indoors. suite. In a yeah. hotel suite. They had a full. And David Cook, man, I thought I was. I take things way too seriously. David Cook was very into. It. He might have had oh. his own bags. Really, David oh, Cook was really, really good. He was awesome. Yeah, at it. So, and the, the, this one of those guys. <laughs> We can't even give the right Potash brother some credit. It was either Adiv or Ezra. I don't know which one. I think it may have been Ezra, but okay. he he was like, I've never even played. Oh, that's uh, the worst. Yeah, and then he just started Missing sinking them, everything. like swoosh nothing after but, swoosh. Nothing but nothing hole. hole. Nothing, nothing but hole. It was at annoying. Point, Adam just looked at him and goes, "Like what the f, dude? Like, yeah. Like, did you get upset? Well, miss? yeah, of course I did. I was." We were, we, David and I were like in the zone and really making, and then once he started like scoring without an issue, right. uh, my game just went downhill because my, I Adam. could not recover. Did you play in the softball game? Yeah. How'd you do? Uh, I got one uh, pop, pop, uh, pop fly foul. Okay. Or no, it wasn't foul. It was just a pop fly right in the pitcher caught it. Okay. All right. It was a quick game. It seemed quicker than it usual. It was also very disorganized, I think. Oh. Recent year. Dustin Colquitt, former uh, chief, yes. he was pitching. Uh, Kevin Rahm was also the pitcher of okay. Mad Men. Yeah. All very right. fun. And, uh, it was super fun. I mean, it, it was, was a blast. It was amazing. Take me out $3.5 million for children's yeah. uh, uh, Mercy Children's well, I was. I shared right field with Cheryl Crow, which was really fun. What do you mean? Uh, we were both in right field. <laughs> we were in right field together. I think is call right is, fielders. Where you go? Oh, there were four people covering right field. <laughs> there were four right fielders, which is my old position, and where you go if you if you just want to sort of hide for the <laughs> for the game. James Vanderbeek had this elaborate pregame stretching routine. Okay, he was very I'll, very I'll into it. it. And yeah. did it take me out to the ball game during the actual seventh inning stretch went down. Went down, okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. Did it end with Gene Lamont at the end? It did. Yep. Okay, very good. I'm glad that everything right. is still doing very well with the big slick. <laughs> I hope you're there next year. I would too. Rich. I'm dropping kids off at camp, man. That's not a metaphor for anything. Literally <laughs> drop them off at camp. That's exactly what I did. Is it the same weekend every year? Uh, they used to have it Father's Day weekend, which was a little oh, bit yeah. dicey. Yeah. Um, so I think they changed it. And it would have been my birthday weekend. It would have been perfect to celebrate my birthday there. Nothing makes me happier than making a charity event about me, even for a split yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Getting happy birthday sung to you when we're trying to focus on something else. Yes. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that I would have gotten on a plane just for that. It sounds like you. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I heard you were very generous. You as a severance package you gave out. So that was very nice of you to do that. Yeah, it's going to gonna be, it's going to be really, really fun. It's, when, it's great. So season two is when do you start shooting that? We uh, start shooting soonish. And then, okay. uh, you know, I'm not sure where, when it would actually Come on, but we're, okay. we're getting going on it. So. Fantastic. Yeah. It, it is so good. Um, Thanks, man. It, it, uh, you are great in it, Adam. Thank and you. the cast is amazing. And it is just, it's visually striking. It's thought provoking. It's uh, frightening. Not going to yep. lie. Yep. Um, and um, and I, I love all of it. So congratulations Thanks, on that. Thank you. Best to you and the and the missus and the kids. Likewise. You got it. Thank you know, you our, for kids, having our kids used to go to school together. Oh. Number of times that I was at a school event and I would cling to this man like a like a rock <laughs> in, a, uh, in the middle of the ocean crashing. Like but just, they still hang out, which is the thing. Even though they're not at the same school anymore, they still they do they, they yeah. do that. They do indeed. Yeah. Um, Adam Scott, everybody should check out Severance on Apple TV, Apple TV Plus. Season two is coming up.